Hi everyone, welcome to Difference Frames the World, an independent channel where you can see the world from a different angle. Today we discuss the chip war between the US and China when the Biden administration expanded the entity list to sanction Chinese companies in the semiconductor industry. The US sanctions against China have done more harm to American chip companies than Chinese firms. In the first half of 2024, China's chip imports dropped by 240 billion yuan, an equivalent of 33 billion US dollars, with 51.6 billion fewer chips purchased. Initially aimed at cutting off China's chip lifeline, these sanctions have led to significant challenges for US businesses. Take Nvidia as an example. In 2022, the Chinese market contributed 22% of its revenue, but in 2023, its sales volume in China dropped to 8.8% of its total income. In 2024, the percentage will be even lower. NVIDIA's CEO criticizes the export controls as meaningless. America's sanctions also harmed its allies in Asia, particularly South Korea and Japan. The global chip supply chain involves many countries, from design to sales, many businesses in Western nations like the US, Japan and South Korea face difficulties selling their goods when the US prohibits them from supplying their products to the Chinese market, where their biggest buyers are. Interestingly, these measures brought forth the transformation of China's chip industry. On November 26, 2024, Huawei introduced its latest smartphone series, the Mate 70. This new series boasts a domestically developed 5G chip and operates on Huawei's system, Harmony OS Next. It represents a significant departure from the previously used open-source Android operating system, highlighting Huawei's move away from reliance on US technology. According to Richard Yu, chairman of Huawei's consumer business group, this device is the most powerful Mate phone ever. Although Huawei's processors are still behind those of American companies like Qualcomm, the high efficiency of Harmony OS Next helps the Mate 70 series compete with Android flagships on the market. The Chinese tech giant has not only survived the US sanctions, but it has also thrived on China's domestic technologies. By the end of 2023, Huawei had over 50,000 granted patents in China, more than 22,000 patents in the US, and about 15,000 across Europe. Huawei is not the only Chinese company that has made tremendous progress, and thousands follow it when the Chinese government invests heavily in the semiconductor industry. In 2022 alone, the amount from the central government reached 200 billion yuan, about 30 billion US dollars. China's local governments also support chip companies extensively. Currently, China's chip industry is undergoing significant changes. Many Chinese companies, previously not seen as market leaders, are beginning to stand out in specific segments. For instance, Advanced Microfabrication Equipment Incorporated AMEC, has achieved considerable success in etching equipment that can replace similar products from the United States. However, American chip companies are struggling. Due to Washington's sanctions against China, American firms have seen their revenues plummet. Worse still, they can do nothing as China accelerates its research and development, which reduces their market share in the Chinese market to a lower level over time. On Monday, December 2, 2024, the United States launched its third crackdown under Joe Biden's presidency on China's semiconductor industry, restricting exports to 140 companies. One of them is a chip equipment maker, Nora Technology Group, a partially state-owned, publicly listed Chinese company that manufactures semiconductor chip production equipment. Nora is currently the largest semiconductor equipment manufacturer in China. This effort to hinder Beijing's chip-making ambitions also targets Chinese chip toolmakers Piatek, ACM Research, and Sea Carrier Technology with new export restrictions. The package also limits shipments of advanced memory chips and chip-making tools to China. The Biden administration's decisive crackdown represents one of its final initiatives to obstruct China's access to and production of chips that could enhance artificial intelligence for military purposes or threaten U.S. national security as highlighted by Western media. This strategic move occurred just weeks before the inauguration of Republican President-elect Donald Trump, who is anticipated to uphold many of Biden's stringent policies against China. The comprehensive package that enforces restrictions on shipments bound for China 
also involves high bandwidth memory chips essential for advanced applications like AI training. It imposes new limitations on 24 additional chip-making tools and three software tools and introduces export curbs on chip-making equipment manufactured in countries such as Singapore and Malaysia. The outgoing U.S. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo has made it clear that the new measures are designed to halt China's progress in developing its domestic semiconductor manufacturing capabilities, which are intended to bolster its military modernization efforts. The restrictions target nearly two dozen Chinese semiconductor firms, two investment entities, and over 100 manufacturers of chip-making tools. Among the affected companies are Suishure Technology Co., CN Qingdao, Shenzhen Pensin Technology, and other firms collaborating with Huawei, a pivotal player in China's pursuit of advanced chip production and development despite rounds of U.S. sanctions. Adding these companies to the U.S. entity list is a decisive move that restricts American suppliers from doing business with them without a special license. Chinese Foreign Ministry spokesman Lin Jian has criticized these U.S. measures, asserting they disrupt global supply chains and undermine international trade order. China will take action to protect Chinese companies' rights and interests, as he stated in a press briefing on December 2, 2024. For the first time, three companies investing in chips, Wise Road Capital, Wingtech Technology Company, and JAC Capital, are being added to the entity list due to their involvement in aiding China's strategic acquisition of sensitive semiconductor capabilities crucial for defense industries. The new rules also expand U.S. authority over chip-making equipment exports by Japanese, Dutch and other manufacturers globally while exempting Japan and the Netherlands from certain constraints under the Foreign Direct Product Rule. The package also targets China's largest contract chip manufacturer, SMIC, adding new restrictions beyond the 2020 sanctions. These regulations follow extensive negotiations with Japan and the Netherlands, key players alongside the United States in advanced chip-making equipment production, and reflect strategic alignment among allies on national security concerns related to technology exports. We have often said that the U.S. cannot fight China alone, so it coerces its allies against China, like a pack of wolves fighting a tiger. Of particular note, the restrictions on target memory used in AI chips at HBM2 levels or higher will notably impact Samsung Electronics for its significant sales volume of HBM chips within China. This latest set of rules marks another substantial shift under President Biden's administration towards tightening tech policies against China since October 2022, when the U.S. introduced comprehensive controls on high-end chip sales, a pivotal change not seen in the past decades. Immediately after the U.S. imposed the new round of sanctions against China, Beijing declared a ban on exporting gallium, germanium, antimony, and other critical high-tech materials to the United States, which will adversely impact the chip industry in the United States. Three years ago, we made a video titled, Do Not Force China to Fry Chips, in which we predicted that America's sanctions would make China's semiconductor industry even more robust. It has come true three years later. China's push for self-sufficiency in the chip sector intensifies amid export restrictions from the U.S. and other countries on advanced chips and manufacturing tools. Currently, Chinese companies have dominated legacy chip manufacturing. Customs data shows that China exported IC products valued at around $131 billion in the first 10 months of 2024, marking a significant increase of about 20% compared to the same time frame in 2023. The chip war initiated by the U.S. aimed to curb China's technological development, but in reality, it has accelerated China's independent technological innovation. China has realized it must control core technologies to gain a firm foothold in international competition, finding opportunities in adversity and turning crises into opportunities. The United States wants to use sanctions to curb China's development, but it has stimulated China's potential for scientific and technological innovation instead. Some argue that after Donald Trump steps into office again next month, the chip war between China and the United States will worsen to its lowest point. However, we do not think the U.S. can achieve its goal and defeat China in the semiconductor industry. The Biden administration has surpassed what Donald Trump had done under his first presidency, from 2017 to 2021, in hindering China's technological advance, and we hardly believe Donald Trump will do more harm to China's chip sector than Biden. China keeps surprising the world with its technological advances. 
It is worth mentioning that ASML has decisively cut its 2025 order forecast due to concerns about revenue from China, which typically constitutes about 20% of its sales. ASML CEO Christophe Fouquet asserted that China might produce some chips at the 5 nanometer and 3 nanometer nodes with limited capacity using older DUV lithography. His statement comes amid reports that Xiaomi has completed the tape out of its first 3 nanometers SOC for a potential launch in 2025, potentially advancing chip design for Huawei's high silicon and other sanctioned firms. In the chip war between China and the United States, Beijing has paid more attention to legacy chip production than 5 nanometer and below, as most products, from electric cars to spaceships, only use 14 nanometer chips and above. When China buys fewer and exports more such chips, the global supply chain will be dramatically reshaped. More and more U.S. chip companies will have to fry potato chips for McDonald's or KFC when they cannot compete with their Chinese counterparts. Thanks for watching our videos and please subscribe to our channel if you have not done that so you will not miss our uploads every day. Like, forward and share our videos with your friends, helping DFTW become a club with 1 million, not 100,000 subscribers shortly. At present, we have 85,000 subs, and we rely on you to grow it bigger.